On Saturday the 14th of December 2019, I attended a rally to protect free speech outside Leinster House in Dublin. This rally had been announced the previous month on the 17th of November, the day after a successful free speech rally which Antifa had tried and failed to disrupt. December's rally was advertised as an hour-long non-partisan silent protest to mark the end of the government's public consultation on hate speech legislation. Initially I wasn't going to go as a run-up to Christmas is always a busy time for me and I felt that there would be enough Dublin-based supporters to give the free speech rally a respectable showing. But then something happened that compelled me to change my mind. Antifa upped the ante. On the 27th of November it was announced that a counter demonstration would be held at the same time and in the same place. This counter demo was organised by a far left Antifa group called the Solidarity Alliance Against Racism and Fascism or SARF for short. They called their counter protest the Rally for Peace on Earth and had enlisted the support of a host of non-governmental organisations prior to announcing it. One of the NGOs, the Galway Anti-Racism Network, a front for the far left People Before Profit, even organised a bus and advertised the counter protest as a family friendly event. Other far left extremists also expressed their support, promising to smash the fash on the day. The icing on Antifa's NGO hate cake was Ireland's beloved militant millionaire minstrel, Christy Moore, as he got in in the act and called on people to support this rally for peace on earth. So without further ado, let's take a look at what a family friendly rally for peace on earth looks like. I arrived at 12.30, a half an hour before the free speech rally was due to start, and found that Antifa and their pals had already occupied our spot. Apparently, they had been there since 10am to ensure our displacement. These people with the tricolours are anti-free speech Republicans and leftists. These are the free speech patriots I was looking for. How are you doing, Dad? Kyle McCarthy. Kyle McCarthy. Oh, Kyle McCarthy. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Already outnumbered by an openly hostile opposition, it was decided to relocate and hold our rally across the street. You could make that up. I didn't know. I didn't realize there were so many idiots in Ireland. I'm telling you. These people are members of the far left party SERA. This party is opposed to the peace process in the north and supports a return to violence. They are linked to the dissident parliamentaries that were responsible for the murder of journalist Lyra McKee in Derry last year. Their banner is a reference to Irish YouTuber Gran Torino. They are trolling him because in 1988, at the age of 18, he joined the British Army to avoid becoming homeless while living in England, having emigrated there the year before. He spent six years as a British soldier, during which time he was stationed in England and Germany and never saw any combat. I think it needs to be remembered that by 1988 we had had 17 years of Section 31 censorship by the state and a lot of Southern Irish were repulsed by the IRA and viewed them as the problem. And for the most part they saw the British as neutral arbiters trying to keep the peace between the warring nationalist and loyalist communities. That was a narrative that was enforced in the media at the time. Section 31 of the Broadcasting Act was repealed in 1994, the same year that Gran Torino left the British Army. Gran Torino has nothing to be ashamed of. I know three lads here in Limerick that joined the British Army during the 80s and 90s after their applications to join the Irish Defence Forces were rejected. It was British Army policy that Southern Irish recruits were never stationed in Northern Ireland, mostly for fear that they might be IRA infiltrators. Gran Torino's past is irrelevant and he is not our leader. He is a YouTuber and self-made citizen journalist that supports freedom of speech. He was attending the rally to show his support and live stream for his channel which I will leave a link to in the description and you can go and make up your own mind about what he stands for now. Keep an eye out for Lanky Boy Blue here. He'll give us an example of his idea of family friendly Irish patriotism later on in this video. So now, let's get back to the family friendly fun at the Antifa Rally for Peace on Earth. Oh, 
typical. The minute I turn my back and something happens, Antifa lob a green smoke grenade at the free speech rally, which is kicked into the centre of the road by a quick-thinking patriot, where it fizzled out before I had a chance to film it. Damn, but I miss that now when I look the other way. That's what happens. More of that to come. With Sarah banished to the plebeian section of the family-friendly Rally for Peace on Earth, I thought it would be safe enough to cross the road to the patrician section where all the TDs and NGO heads were monitoring their minions from a safe distance. All I wanted to do was take a few wide-shot photos of our free speech rally from across the road. As the bus that you can see in the photos turned the corner, one of the SARF stewards pushed me towards it and then pulled me back, warning me to mind myself. I decided to head back to our free speech rally taking the scenic route so I could soak up all that peace and love emanating from the crowd. Ireland against fascism. Am I a fascist? Am I a fascist? Joan, Joan. Sorry, Joan, am I a fascist? Hello. Sorry, sorry about that there. I wouldn't advise us. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't advise us. I wouldn't advise us, son. Don't lie there. Oh, the mines, yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to say if you would? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Has it got much on there, mate? My name is Colin McCarthy. I'm uh, travelling up from Limerick to stand with the Patriots uh, in defence of free speech. And I think it's gas if people want to silence people. If you listen to the music they're playing, uh, rebellious music and all this, it's actually quite ironic that they want to silence people and shut us up. Yeah, what do you, you think of the Julian Assange? I know! The Assange! I mean, you know, he'd be on our side. Yeah. You know, this is the gas thing. They're so, so confused and... Uh, should, should we go over and say it? Or maybe they, they got it mixed up when they were maybe coming up they here. Did. I went over and asked them why they thought it was a fascist and they tried to knock the camera out of my hand. 
one of their heavies tried to push me under the bus as a the bus passed. Right. Right camera, yeah. Bloody hell. So they're not very pleasant people. No. They're not very peaceful either, or loving. Well, I'm sure there is a few peaceful ones there that just misguided. The thing is that the hate speech legislation is that it's already, we have legislation in place, the incitement to hate for that, which is actually very excessive. Yeah. Now, the media haven't reported, but one of the first people that was actually uh, convicted under the hate speech legislation, or the hate, hate speech, uh, or not the hate speech, the incitement to hate for that, one of the first people was a Lyric woman in 1991, I think it was. She was convicted of telling her boyfriend to get back in the banana boat, you black bastard. Oh. Now, that's in a hotel lobby. The boyfriend didn't report it. There were two, a couple having a row. Someone yeah. else overheard him. She got arrested. She got done for it. Now, he didn't want her charged. She didn't want her done. So yeah. other people can take offence on someone else's behalf. Yeah, And yeah. the guard will be avoided to investigate it. Now, they're up in the route. They're stepping her up now. And it's going to be Facebook posts and tweets. And they think that's a good use of guard of time. But we have people getting stabbed. And where I've run from Limerick, we have people dealing heroin openly. And they think that that's a priority for people to be arrested. For yes, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. It people is are, insane. These people isn't haven't got uh, Ireland's interest in hearts, really. Richard Boyd Barrett, Joan Collins, Gino Kelly, Louise O'Reilly and Paul Murphy. These far-left TDs stood with Antifa and the NGOs against freedom of speech. People before profit are here at this demonstration against racism and the politics of division and hate because it is absolutely critical that we don't let the politics of the far right uh, and racism take hold in this country. Uh, and sadly they're beginning to get organised and the politics of racism on the far right will be a disaster uh, for that project. Okay, so we're uh, the rise contingent at the anti-racist, anti-fascist uh, protest called by a whole number of trade unions, NGOs, civil society, uh, etc. I think it's really important that there's a good turnout uh, today, that people are making a clear stance against um, racism, discrimination, homophobia. Um, I think it's definitely the case that there is a, you know, a, a growing danger that the far right is getting organised in this country. Um, I think we have to make sure that kind of far right ideology doesn't get a foothold uh, in in Ireland. Build, you know, a united anti-fascist, anti-racist uh, movement, which this protest can definitely be at uh, the start of. To say very clearly that these people you know, don't represent the vast majority of people in Irish society. These far-left TDs incited hatred and violence towards free speech supporters by labelling us all as far-right, fascists and racists. Sort out a lot of drugs for a lot of people in this city. I fucking sort out a lot of drugs for a lot of people in this city. Joel at night, Joel at night. What a lovely bunch of people they are. So who are these far left TDs actually supporting and why are they protesting our free speech rally? Are we really a bunch of racists and Nazis like they say? Let's find out. Here we have uh, Tracy O'Mahony, the organiser of today's rally. Hey Tracy. How are you? Um, I think we have a fantastic turnout. Um... It's button the spot. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's alright, yeah. It's all anybody, anybody who saw my last video, or sorry, my first video, will know I'm highly uncomfortable on, in front of the camera. Um, Aren't we all? Why do you think I'm on this side? Yes. yes. <laughs> I suppose 
reason we're here today is um, a number of things are happening at the minute. Uh, one, the Garda Commissioner at the start of October signalled his intention to um, create a new working definition for hate crime in Ireland. And this new working definition introduces several new elements not found in Irish legislation. Uh, it is changing the way that um, crime is going to be recorded, it's changing the way people are going to be charged with crime, it's now going to be based on a perception test. So whether or not a person will be charged with a hate crime will be determined according to the oh, belief. Tracy, nice, nice job. Sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. 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 <laughs> um, it'll be uh, determined according to the belief or opinion of the alleged victim or any other person. So I suppose that, that's one thing that's highly, that's very, very concerning. Um, the other thing is um, that Charlie Flanagan uh, signalled his intention to commence a hate speech consultation period in October. Um, the reason I suppose we're here today is that the hate speech consultation period ended yesterday. Um, this consultation period, uh, from my point of view at least, it was very um, subjective. The, the questioning that, that, uh, that Charlie Flanagan set out in the, in, in the um, survey, uh, the questioning was very subjective. Um, they weren't. You, 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 the answers were presupposed from the start. <laughs> Sorry. Ambulance. Oh. Wait. Okay. Thanks, Tracy. All right. Sorry for putting you on the spot. Well, 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 would you look who it is? Look who shows up just as our free speech rally is about to end. It's Google Nazi Guy. You're, you're in with Mark Malone, we have the evidence, have so walk. I heard all We have the evidence, no. I need, I need on Hold on, I, no, listen, well, go then. Go then. Go. Because I know why you're here. Hold on. Hold on, I'll tell you what the difference is between us and the Antifa. Man. Will I tell you? Because you stood over on our side, outside Google, and you've done a Nazi salute for Mark Malone. Mark Malone you've done it for, which is all over Facebook, and you watched them. You watched them give you your cue to put your Nazi's hand up. You did. Yes, 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 you did. Now, I have, it on, I have it on tape here now. If you don't want me to release this, you better go. Man, you right? I know, I know why you're here. I know why you're here. I don't want to start a fight and then kick me off. Hold on, we're not starting a fight. Hold on, we're not fighting people. You are the fighting people on that side with your anti far crowd. You were with them. Man, you were with people who got profit mark alone the last time. Man, they, they don't yes, like you were. Nazis, we don't well, listen, like I've got, I've got the video footage at home. Right, I'll put it. I'll, I'll put the, I'll, I'll, see the I'll put that footage up with this footage that I'm after taking now. Right, okay. right. I'm telling you now, you better go. Right, you're a plant. Who is Google Nazi guy, and why was he there? Is he a crypto communist? Is he a Soros shill? Is he an Antifa plant? An angsty anarchist? Weaponized autism? 
Is he with Solidarity, a.k.a. the Socialist Party? Most free speechers seem to believe that he's with people before profit. Whoever he is acting for, we might never know. But why he was there is fairly obvious. No, I know why you're here. I know why you're here. More than likely, he was there hoping to make his way to the front of the free speech rally and give a repeat performance of his Nazi salute for national TV and cue some anti-fat theatrics for the RTE cameras. Failing that, he was hoping to start a fight. Anything to discredit our free speech rally and have us labelled as far-right and fascists on RTE News. We are here because Nick goes in the dark. Fear will fill a void. Q or no Q, Antifa were determined to put on a show for the cameras and do their best to try and provoke a violent reaction from the free speech rally. When there was uh, the austerity alliance, which is now all divided up and gone. Yeah. Oh, oh, look, did they He just threw coins over at the rally for free speech. I'll slow it down for you in case you missed it and you can watch it again. Here we have an attendee of the Rally for Peace on Earth, the family friendly Rally for Peace on Earth, and he's throwing coins over at men, women, and children that he knows are attending the Rally for Free Speech. He's trying to injure someone in hopes that it'll provoke a violent reaction from our side. <laughs> I witnessed, I witnessed a number of items being thrown by the peace rally as the scuffle broke out. I saw a woman getting hit in the face with a full bottle of water. This caused some of our people to shout back and a guard overreacted and push back on people who weren't even going forward, knocking a child over. Well that's it, show's over, time to go home. But not for everyone. Some of those peace loving Antifa heads are determined to have some family love and fun. Sorry, uh, can I ask you what happened? We were standing down there at the corner talking, parting ways with our friends, and the gang from the up there, the Who Antifa, the Antifa, the Antifa club, came running down and attacked, attacked all of us here with young children, and now the guard here arrested my sister. The guard here arrested my sister, and we 
We're the victims here. You're right, you're We're right. the victims. Right. Not safe. It's okay. It's absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy. My sister's after being arrested. She was attacked by six fellas and you arrested her. Did you see me arresting on you? I've got it on video. Yeah, your video showed why I didn't arrest on you. She got dragged to the ground for a friend of ourselves. No, you don't. We were trying to stop them and they were attacking us. And the guards came and arrested the woman that was trying to save our husband. It's open warfare, Antifa. It's our flags, it's our dirt. Guards everywhere. Antifa there, they were uh, attacking us up the road. This is the flag we've seen across the road from where we were, up outside all there, and the guards, the guards had, uh, here it comes to take it, you can clearly see it's an uh, Antifa flag, we have a bit of help here now coming, there's two of them being arrest, arrested, they came across the street afterwards again, we were just coming from the protest, so we were, and they, uh, they broke off in two directions, so did they, they're that side of the street there and they're up on the other side. This is unbelievable. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie, for that. Thanks for bringing these people into this country. We appreciate this. We appreciate what you see here on the street of Dublin. Don't get too close, Paul. Don't get too close. Who are you? Charlie. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, he's the See you later, buddy. Well, it was good to get home to Limerick. Here's how the state broadcaster, RTE, reported the day's events on the 9 o'clock news. Three people were arrested following rival demonstrations by anti-racism and free speech groups outside Leinster House today. A number of scuffles broke out as Gordy had to hold back some of the protesters. A protest against proposed new hate speech laws had been organised by a number of groups including the Irish Freedom Party, Yellow Vest Ireland and Renewer. A counter demonstration was held by unions, faith groups and anti-racism organisations. At one point it seemed anti-racism protesters were trying to confront the free speech event but Gardaí and their own event stewards held them back. Organisers of the anti-racism event said they're concerned about the increasing levels of anti-immigrant sentiment. We're concerned about the rise in violence, uh, racist violence, the number of hate crimes that have been committed, that, have, that, that we've charted rising over the last number of years, and the increasing confidence uh, of the far right. But those behind the free speech protest says there is concern about new hate speech laws. Mass immigration pushes up demand for houses, pushes up rents and suppresses wages. That was the Irish Central Bank that's, that said that and, and people around here, we are just making the same argument. Three people were arrested as a result of today's demonstrations. Yesterday marked the end of public consultation on proposed new laws on hate speech.
John Carrain, RTE News, Dublin. Well, at least RTE had the good sense not to call the counter-demonstration the Rally for Peace on Earth. And while overall their report was balanced, they did try to imply the demonstrations were about anti-racism versus anti-immigration. They did their best to avoid showing the massed anti thugs and completely neglected to mention that a family was attacked by them on their way home from the free speech rally. Einar's Shane O'Curry went unchallenged about his contention that the free speech rally is evidence that the far right is organising and growing. Just like the far left politicians, he is inciting hatred towards the free speech supporters. The fact is that both the far left and the far right are equally opposed to freedom of speech. They are two sides of the same totalitarian coin. Currently, the far left want to silence people so that they can't raise concerns about mass immigration and demographic change. They believe that Ireland is just a place to live, and if you say that it is much more than that, that it is the homeland of the Irish people, and that emigration should be controlled for the benefit of the Irish nation, then you are labelled as a racist and a fascist. But it's not just the far left that oppose freedom of speech. Most of the mainstream and neoliberal parties do as well. Einar, which up until a few months ago was called Einar Ireland, the European Network Against Racism, had promoted an election pledge since 2004 which includes a protocol to endorse the No Hate Speech movement and its campaign for hate speech legislation. It is the very last protocol, just above the signature area, so it would be hard to miss it. During last year's local and European elections, nearly every party signed up to Enar's pledge, including, to my surprise, AIN2. AIN2, a breakaway faction from Sinn Féin, claims to be a pro-life party, and I have no doubt that most of its members are, as they were recruited from the ranks of the pro-life movement after the 2018 abortion referendum. Enar campaigned for abortion during the referendum and claimed that the Eighth Amendment was racist. I was surprised that AIN2, which also claims to oppose groupthink, would cede moral authority to a pro-abortion NGO, especially since hate speech legislation will inevitably be used to silence pro-life voices. You can't be upsetting the ladies when they want to kill their unborn babies with all your life begins at conception talk. With the general election on next Saturday the 8th of February, I urge everyone to give the number one vote only to candidates that support freedom of speech. Call it what you will. Freedom of speech is an inalienable right, a God-given right, a natural right, a human right. It is an individual liberty and it belongs to everyone, not just the left or the right. Antifa and their NGO pals failed to deter our rally to protect free speech and I was glad that I went to show my support. These NGOs are corrupted by state and corporate sponsorship. Irish YouTuber Gerald Murphy uploaded a video the day before the rally which lays them bare. I'll leave a link in the description. They have even less credibility now that they're standing with violent Antifa thugs. The next free speech rally is on today from 1pm to 2pm outside Leinster House. I know a lot of people are busy canvassing for the election, but if you are in Dublin, then please make an effort to attend for the hour. Hope to see you there. August Law Ayla Breed, Holiday of Galair.